Hello, my name is Alex Lavrov. I'm from IBM in European team for data ops and replication. And this is the fourth video in a series of videos about IBM change data capture. In the first three videos, we installed Confluent platform, installed utilities that will help us to consume messages from topics, and also downloaded, installed and configured the first instance of IBM change data capture for Kafka. In this video, we'll create a replication and start replicating data from our source DB2 database to Kafka topic. Let's get started. Okay, so before we begin with Management Console, let's uh, get another look at our instance that we created. So let's check that it actually runs. We can check it uh, by running uh, ps -if grep dmts 64 Okay, we see that it runs. Uh, all the parameters and the name of the instance is Kafka 1. The port that is listening we can easily check with DM configure TS. So we'll start it IBM CDC bin DM configure TS. Um, let's list the instances. We can see that Kafka 1 is running on port 11701. Uh, Status running. Okay. And uh, now we'll exit and uh, go to Management Console to configure the replication. Okay, so now we are in uh, Management Console in Access Manager tab. And uh, the first thing we'll need to configure a data store for the new CDC agent that we installed. So uh, let's create new data store. Name will be just Kafka. Again, it's just a string uh, that will help identify uh, the data store. Hostname is the hostname where the CDC agent runs. Uh, it's CAF SRV. The port is the same port 11701. Uh, let's ping it to see that uh, we can reach it. It's reachable. We'll remove the subscription locking because we are the only one that is gonna gonna use it. So it's much simpler to use it uh, without locking. We are not in multi-user uh, environment. And connection parameters, if you remember when we created the instance, we used TS user as a built-in user and also the password was a TS user in our case. TS user, TS user, TS user. Okay, so now we created the data store and the next step will be assigning the users that can use this data store. We have only one user admin, so let's assign it. Assign user admin. I will keep uh, all login details and uh, now it's assigned. Uh, if we'll go to configuration tab right now, as you can see, we have uh, Kafka as a target here and uh, pre-configured uh, data store uh, DB2 test DB that we'll use as a source for our replication. So now we can start and defining sub subscriptions for this uh, data store. First, let's take a look at our source uh, database. It's a DB2 called TestDB. We have a schema there, auto insurance, and in this schema we have several tables. Some tables are wide and uh, big, some tables are narrow and small. Uh, we'll start the uh, first replication with a very small table, uh, vehicle types, uh, which has uh, three fields and 18 rows. Uh, we're doing it just, uh, it makes us easier to follow the example. So let's map this table. We are back in our management console. Let's create new subscription. Name will be V types, source is DB2 test DB, and the target will be Kafka. Okay, we will map tables. Uh, let's go with the default type auto insurance, uh, vehicle types. Next, and as you can see, we have a warning uh, which says that Kafka properties has not been set. Uh, as you remember, during instance creation, we didn't specify any Kafka properties and I mentioned that uh, they will be specified on the subscription level. Uh, so let's hit on finish. Uh, the subscription is uh, being created right now. Uh, there's exchange of metadata between source and target. And uh, now we have the source uh, table mapping. Let's double click to see the details. So we have the source columns, uh, filtering and coding, just regular uh, properties of a subscription. And in Kafka, we have a key column, which is uh, specified uh, on the table level. If it's not specified on the source, uh, it's a very good idea, and sometimes it's mandatory uh, to specify the key. But in this case, it was fetched from database and uh, 
populated here. Now the next step uh, will be specifying uh, Kafka properties. Now right click on the subscription, Kafka properties, and uh, we'll have the properties window opened. Here we have several options how to replicate to Kafka. Using Zookeeper server, uh, we will put here hostname port of the Zookeeper server and uh, schema registry, of course, because the default format is Avro. The second option is Kafka REST proxy. REST proxy is very useful for developers when they develop software and they don't want to deal with Kafka API or not just uh, code in Java, but in other languages. And it's very convenient uh, to use uh, REST. Uh, maybe we'll cover it in the uh, following videos. But for high volume replications, when uh, top performance is needed, it's better to use the Java API. So we'll use a Zookeeper server uh, connection type. So here we'll put CAF SRV. The port of Zookeeper is 2181. Uh, the communication with Zookeeper is not encrypted. Topic and prefix uh, commit stream we will uh, ignore for now. Schema registry runs on the same server, CAF SRV, and the port is 8081. Uh, the communication with schema registry in our setup is not uh, encrypted as well. Okay, and now we are ready to replicate. As you can see, the method of replication is mirror. And the status is refresh, meaning that all the data from the table will be read uh, using select statement and sent uh, to the target. Uh, from that moment, it will switch to mirroring, meaning it will switch to reading the logs. So let's start the replication. So right click on the subscription, start mirroring. It's in continuous mode uh, and there is a warning that at least one of the tables in status refresh. We know that because it's uh, the initial state of the table mapping, the default one. Uh, let's click OK. Subscription is starting. If we go to monitoring, we saw that it quickly was in a refresh before mirroring, mirroring mode. Uh, it ended quick because it's a very uh, small table. Uh, let's take a look maybe on the events, what's going on there. Retrieve events last 24 hours. And we can see that 18 rows were sent to the target. And on the target side, we see that 18 rows were received and 18 rows were successfully applied. Now let's check what's going on on the server side. So on the server side, let's uh, list the topics uh, that we have currently in Kafka. Uh, we are using Kafka topics command with uh, list option and also Zookeeper is a local host uh, on the port 2181. Let's run this command. And uh, as we can see, two additional topics were created. Kafka 1 vtypes commit stream, uh, it's internal topic used uh, for bookmark information, we'll cover it in the following videos. And the topic with the data, as you can see, it has a very structured uh, uh, name. It's uh, Kafka 1 uh, as uh, the name uh, of the instance, uh, vtypes the name of the subscription, source DB, then the name of the schema, auto insurance, and the name of the source table, vehicle types. Uh, by default in Kafka, the moment the messages arrive to the topic that does not exist, it will be created. This is the default uh, behavior on Kafka server. Sometimes it's switched off for security reasons. So in that case, this topic must be pre-created before you uh, start replicating. So this is the structure of the topic, uh, of the name of the topic <clears throat> that is used in CDC. And uh, you must follow it. So it's uh, Kafka 1, the name of the instance. Then the name of the subscription, uh, word uh, source DB, and then schema and the source uh, table uh, that comes from the server. So uh, now let's see what we have inside uh, the topic. So if you didn't install Kafka Cat, uh, we would use uh, Kafka Avro Console Consumer Command, which comes uh, with Confluent Platform. So this is the command we'll execute, uh, Kafka Avro Consumer. Uh, bootstrap server is a local host on port 1992. Uh, topic is this the topic that was created. We'll consume all the data from the beginning because otherwise it will start at the latest offset uh, and we'll wait for new messages to arrive without printing the old ones. And also we'll use additional property which is print key. Every message in Kafka has a key and the payload. So we'll uh, look at the key as well. Let's click on enter. And uh, these are the messages that we have in Kafka right now. 
this is uh, the key and this is the data that came from the source table and it will count of course from 1 to 18 these are all rows uh, before we'll try insert update and uh, delete some of the rows in the source table and see how they're replicated to kafka let's take a look uh, at the general representation of the table in kafka uh, in the default change data capture behavior so how the messages are represented in a topic uh, each message in the topic represents change to the row in the source table so if we update insert or delete a row on the source table we'll see the message that will represent this in the topic and in every given offset if you look at it uh, the most recent message with specific key will represent the current state uh, in the source table so for example if we'll take table tab 1 as you can see on the screen i1 represents the integer column v2 represent varchar column uh, and I1 is used as the key. So uh, if we look at the topic and we see three messages there, one, the key one, one ABC, key two, two DEF, and again, key one, one GH high, it means that in the source table, we have two rows, one GH high and two DEF, because one ABC is already not relevant. It was replaced with one GH high. So now let's take a look at all individual uh, messages and uh, operations. So insert. When we insert uh, a new row to the table, in the topic we'll get the key, the new key that was inserted, and all uh, columns that represent this row. So now let's go to our source table vehicle type and create a new row. So this is our table uh, vehicle types. As you can see, the last key is 18. We'll add another row, make it uh, 19, V19. The vehicle class will be convertible and the vehicle size will be small. But before we commit the changes, let's go back uh, to the server and this time we'll use uh, Kafka Cat to consume messages from the topic. So Kafka Cat, uh, there are several options we'll uh, use. Minus B is for the bootstrap server, minus T for the topic, minus Q just to skip some uh, additional uh, messages that we don't really need, minus S for Avro, minus R with uh, the URL to uh, schema registry, and the interesting option is minus F to format the output. So what we'll see in the output, we'll see the K is the key. The key is not actually part of the message, but part of the metadata of the message. Then we have the new line, then the message itself, and in the parentheses we'll put the length of the message. We'll use it uh, mainly for delete to see exactly what length of the message we get, but for now we'll just uh, put it in parentheses, and then we have new line, some delimiter for the new line, and another new line. Minus O and means it will not start reading from beginning, but will start reading from the last offset uh, because we don't want to see the messages we already have in topic. We want to see only the new messages that will arrive. So let's start it. There is nothing because we didn't commit anything yet. Let's go back to our database and commit the change. Okay, so now the change is committed. Let's go back to the server and that's what we see. So we see the key. Okay, this is V19, new line, and the new message that arrived. It's uh, the key itself, uh, the vehicle class, type string, and the vehicle size is small. The length of the message that arrived was 35. Okay, so now let's uh, continue to the next type of the message. So then we get to deletes. So how are deletes are represented on our topic? As you remember, we said that every change to the row will reflect it in the topic by a message. So when we delete a message, we're actually removing everything, updating all columns to null. So in this case, we'll get the key of the message and null message because the current row will become null. Okay, so now let's remove the row we just added. Let's go back to our database and remove the whole row. Let's commit the change, it disappeared, go back to the server, and as you can see, we have the key type V19 and null. 
How we know it's null? Because the length of the message is minus 1. If we read the help of uh, Kafka cat, you'll see that the null messages has length of minus 1. Uh, because to distinguish them from the empty string, which length will be 0. So let's go to the next message. And the last operation, update, uh, is basically just sending the new version of the row. So once the row is updated, we'll get the key and uh, the new version of the row It's very will be similar to insert. The only difference will be when we update the key. When the key is updated, it means that the row with the old key stops to exist, meaning that it will be deleted, and a new row with a new key will be added, so we'll get two messages. One message delete for the old key, and the new message, the new version of the row with the new key. So let's uh, try to do the update. Let's go back to our database and update uh, version 18 to, let's say, huge. Okay, now it's committed. Let's go back to the server, and as you can see, we got the new version of the row with huge and also of course it's 35 uh, bytes length now let's uh, update the key let's go here and update the key to 19 let's commit the change and we go back to our server we see that we got null minus one uh, to type v18 and we got a new row with v19 and uh, the whole message again so at this point we have a simple application working and this will conclude our video. In the next video we'll see more advanced topics, how to format the messages, how to replicate different uh, structures of the messages to Kafka and how to communicate with Kafka in different ways. Thank you for watching.